all those who are watching. Amen. Amen. Yes, yeah. the Lord is good. He is worthy. Amen. 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 And if you will, turn your Bibles to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 30. And I will, we'll be reading verses 1 through 6. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 1 through 6. And when you get there, would you please stand? And it reads, And it came to pass, when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south, and Ziklag smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire, and had taken the women captive that were therein, they slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahilam the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabon, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spanked of stone in him, because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his son and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. You may be seated. I would like to speak on the topic. I'm about to encourage myself. Amen, somebody. Amen. I'm about to encourage myself. And let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your most beautiful name. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you for all that you do, Father. And we just pray that as your word comes forth, that it circumcise each and every one of our hearts. Giving you all the praises, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, at the very beginning of this message, I should point out very quickly and immediately that the message today is not necessarily for the faith of heart. Hmm. If you're only listening and watching today for the purpose and an expressed intent of having, of hearing a message that will simply and merely make you feel good, feel better, give you spiritual jitters and jeepers, make you feel happy and lighthearted and fuzzy and built up on the inside of your soul, you might want to ease up and out of your comfort spot right now. Hmm. You see, this message today is not meant for those who only show up so they can get a spiritual hit or a spiritual high right. and a spiritual pump and then go back home the same way that you came in. Because this message purposely and deliberately does not provide quick, swift, speedy solutions and easy answers. Well, I really want to explore and examine a subject that is not very popular today, not often discussed and talked about in our day or in our culture, and that subject, subject is long-suffering. The Apostle Paul, writing to the, to the church of Galatea in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, gives us a list of the characteristics of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Among them are love, joy, and peace. And one of the characteristics in which he lifts up and places on the register with the other fruits is long-suffering. Some translations say patience, some says tolerance, and some says selflessness. But now most of us have no direct issue or problem at all with the fruit of love, joy, and peace. But the idea of long-suffering gives us a lot of pause and reservation. Throwing long-suffering into the mix can destroy a lot of testimonies. But the reality is, 
that I may have no direct issue with love, but I may have a problem with loving you long if you do something wrong to me. I may have no issue with joy, but my issue may be keeping my joy long if you try to discourage me. I surely desire to have peace in my life, but in the midst of the chaos, disorder, and turmoil that is going on in this world today, my, I may have an issue with having peace long. And yes, the text testifies in Galatians chapter 5 that the fruit of the Spirit, the manifestation and the expression of the presence of the Holy Spirit in a believer's life is there will be a time, moments, and periods when we will suffer long. Amen, somebody. Amen. And if you are in Christ and Christ is in you, you are laughing and smiling all the time, cruising through, the, through life on a bed of roses, and always appeased, and you'll never, and you'll never find yourself dealing with discouragement, dabbling with disappointment, downright dejected and, and, and depressed, struggling with uncertain nights and anxious days. You should be a little bit worried, bothered, and concerned because it is the enemy's full-time occupation and objective to oppose and obstruct the lives of the people of God. We're the only ones on the planet who have the opportunity. To do something effective, official, uh, official, and effectual in the name of God and the kingdom of the God Almighty. Mm -hmm. It is the anointing that operates in us, through us, and among us that has the cap uh, capability to dismantle and to disjoint the enemy's hold on this world, and therefore he must contest and combat us because if he leaves us untouched and unscathed, you're going to tear his kingdom down. Mm -hmm. And let us not be ignorant, my brothers and sisters, to who the enemy really is. Mm -hmm. You see, a lot of people in this world don't believe in Satan, don't believe in demons, don't believe in darkness, but we see it every day. Mm -hmm. And as children of God, don't let us be ignorant. Because the real enemy in our life is not the people sitting next to you, your neighbor, or anybody that you talk to. The real enemy in our lives is Satan himself. Mm -hmm the prince of the air and the rulers of the systems of this world. Amen. And the apostle Peter wrote to the early church that they were going to go through some things, but in the midst of their trouble and tragedy, that they needed to recognize that God is at work in it and in all of his children. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Because the word Paul, uh, Peter went on to say, after you have suffered for a little while, mm -hmm. the God of all grace will perfect you establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. Mm -hmm. And what that is telling us that you cannot be perfected, strengthened, or established until and unless you first learn how to suffer. Mm -hmm. Because everybody can shout on the success and when things are all gravy, but can you shout in the midst of the suffering and the pain? Mm -hmm. Anybody can shout when God gets you through something, but can you shout and celebrate while you're still carrying the burdens in your hearts. Mm -hmm. Everybody can shout when they are coming out, but can you shout when you're going through mm -hmm. and don't know your way out of it? Mm -hmm. You see, if I have learned that we will have to go through some things in our life sometimes, mm -hmm. just because we've been saved don't exempt us from going through some suffering, through some pain, through some troubling times. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Because David is going through some times right in our scripture just read this morning. Mm -hmm. But what I love is that he is encouraged in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. As children of God, we need to be encouraged in the Lord. Mm -hmm. You see, because no person will go through this life untried, untested, and unmolested. Mm -hmm. Jesus declared, in the world you will have tribulations, which means setbacks, mm -hmm. failures, and disappointments, mm -hmm. but be of good cheer. I, Jesus Christ, have already overcome the world. Mm -hmm. So those who are in Jesus Christ, the children of God, have already overcome the world. Mm -hmm. All we have to do is wait on the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, now we're living in a society where there's a push button, instamatic, nanosecond, microwave, overnight society. Mm -hmm. But I want to remind you, everything in life is not quick. Mm -hmm. Some things will take time. Change do not occur overnight. Mm -hmm. We pray to God and we want God to function like Federal Express. Yeah. Uh, get it to you by tomorrow. Mm -hmm. 
But God does not always choose or operate in that manner. I have come to under the I have come to the understanding that every day is not going to be sunny. I will, not, I will not always be smiling, warm, happy, and fuzzy. Yeah. My money may get funny tomorrow, and my change may be a little strange yesterday. Yeah. The rain may not fall this year, and the storm may strike at any time. Mm -hmm. Some things in life take time. Mm -hmm. Some prayers take time. Restoring some relationships take time. Mm -hmm. Growing spiritually takes time. Mm -hmm. Constructing a marriage takes time. Mm -hmm. Raising and rearing children takes time. Shattering a stronghold and breaking free from an addiction that has had you bound takes time. Building a strong church with a vibrant witness takes time. Enduring hardship as a good soldier of Christ Jesus takes time. And yes, changes takes time even in society. Here it is not always instant. Sometimes it takes time. And let me bring it a little closer home. Getting rid of that mean, spiteful attitude takes time. Mm -hmm. Growing accustomed to change takes time. Yes, yes. Not having things your way takes time. <laughs> but the good news is yes. that if you are a child of God, God will give you the ability to go through the tough and rough spots without you falling apart. Mm -hmm. Give you the ability to go through difficult moments without flipping out. Yes. To deal with haters and hell raisers yes. without going postal. Yes. All right to confront your critics, to live through ridicule, to survive the negativity, and to battle with backsliders. Mm -hmm. And even sidestep silly folks. <laughs> and what I'm trying to say, my brothers and sisters, God will get you to the ability to the boiling point, but not boil over. Yeah. To get you to the edge of the cliff without jumping off. Mm -hmm. To close to get close to the fire and not get burned. Mm -hmm. To get lowered into your Red Sea and not drown. Mm -hmm. God gives us the ability to go through some things without losing our mind and what we're going through. Mm -hmm. In order for you to hold up before God shows up so that you don't mess up, God is setting up what we're going through. Mm -hmm. He wants us to endure the things of this world. And I say that to say, we have to learn to encourage ourselves. Yes. Despite what's going on in the world and what even is going on in our household. Let us encourage ourselves in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm trying to talk to some folks who feel like they're about to lose it because you feel like you can't go on any farther. Mm -hmm. You have had it up to here. You're at the end of your rope at your Red Sea beyond the point of no return. Don't know what to do or which way to go, and you feel like you can no longer cope. But I want to send a text message, a Snapchat, a tweet to your soul that God is always with us, and he is already active in our situation. Because whether, whatever we, go, we are going through, no matter how bad it is, it is not going to take us out. So like David, encourage yourself in the Lord. The fires didn't burn you. The lions did not eat you. You slept through the Red Sea and did not go under. Yeah. You had to deal with demons and help handle haters, but didn't fall apart. Didn't give up. Didn't let go. And you didn't let lose. And you didn't lose your mind. Mm -hmm. But you kept your joy, your peace, and your sanity because God kept you yeah. and, and sustained you in the midst of it all. Yeah. Is there anybody in here who can declare, "I made it"? I'm a survivor, I'm enrolled, I'm in training, and I'm enrolled in spiritual maturity 101. Even though I am tested, when I go through the fire, I should come out as pure gold because God said I would. I'm striving to be spiritually mature, fully developed, perfected, completed, full, fulfilled, balanced, and well-rounded. Spiritual maturity comes from suffering. And sometimes you have to suffer long. Mm -hmm. You have to learn how to wait on the Lord. And you don't want to have to keep in, in how to keep smiling when you're crying on the inside. Mm -hmm. How to keep hoping when you're hurting. Mm -hmm. How to keep going when you feel like quitting. Yes, yes. The topic of long suffering mm -hmm. is not popular and fashionable to discuss in our day. But what is popular today is naming and claiming, mm -hmm. 
tagging and bagging, mm. blabbing and grabbing. Mm. What is popular today is to sow that seed of this seed of money instead of the gospel seed. Yes. Uh -huh. This is a subject not a lot of people want to talk about because how do you keep your joy, how do you keep your sanity when you're surrounded by a bunch of junk? Mm -hmm. How do you sing when you're sad? How do you endure when nothing changed? How do you hang in and hold on? Mm -hmm. But like David, we need to learn how to encourage ourselves in the Lord. Yeah. And let me park it here for a moment and say, it would be wonderful and glorious if we always had support from others who were always there to lift us up mm -hmm. and pat us on our back and to tell us how good we look, how good we are, and how much we mean to them. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is about life and experiences is that sometimes you need it most when you need it when you need it most. Mm -hmm. People will not be there for you, to embrace you, to egg you on, or to encourage you. 